What is up, everybody? Welcome back here to the Debra Rao YouTube channel. I'm your host, Kevin Coleman, and we're back with another Dynasty Trades edition. So what we've been doing, we did a bunch of first, 2025 first, 2024 first videos. Now what I want to do is I like to do these Dynasty Trade videos with themes. So this theme is going to be 2024 free agent class and Dynasty. How are we navigating that? I'm going to kind of give you guys a list per position of who is a free agent. Now, some of them might get franchise tagged, but right now these are the 2024 guys. And then we're going to go through trades for these guys. And how do we navigate like the running back class, especially with all the older backs that are coming in um, and kind of going out of their former teams and where do we think they're going to land? And as always, giving you guys exactly what you want, dynasty trades, 12 team, super flex, tight end premium you know, values. So you can kind of go out and maybe make some of these deals in your league because why are we here? To give you actionable content. So we're going to be diving in to these dynasty trades, having some fun with them, talking about T. Higgins, of course, because he's everybody out there. And then some rookie picks involved in these things too, like Roman Nunes and those type of guys. Where are the values at? So let's start with the quarterback class first, though. So here's our free agent quarterbacks. Kirk Cousins, Mayfield, Joshua Dobbs, Brissett, Minshew, Winston, Darnold, Tannehill, Locke, and Huntley. Now, this isn't a sexy quarterback class by any means. It does seem like Baker Mayfield's probably going back to Tampa Bay. Kirk Cousins uh, looks like he's probably going back to Minnesota. After that, like, I don't really love a lot of these guys in terms of like stashes or whatever. Obviously, I'm going to always have a soft spot in my heart for Jameis because he won me a title a couple years, a few years ago when he's on Tampa. Uh, Tyler Huntley is the interesting one. I like him as a stash. I'm not saying he's going to be anything, but you know, he's, he's competent enough to be a quarterback in this league. I like him. You know, I like Drew Locke, those guys. You're going to stash some of these guys as you go. I'm not going to show you trades for all of these quarterbacks. What we, what I am going to do though, is I'm going to show you trades for the two guys that I think are going to be relevant in our leagues next year. So Kirk Cousins. Let's start there. I don't mind Kirk Cousins. I know he's coming off the Achilles. Remember, he was having a QB top seven QB, you know, season this last year. If he resigns with Minnesota, now all reports seem like it's like a two year, 30 to $35 million deal that they're going to offer him. Now, I don't know if Minnesota is going to be aggressive in the draft. I know there's some rumblings about that, but if he goes back to Minnesota, once you kind of know where his value and, and where is that, I still think he's going to be a quarterback in this league even with the Achilles, right? So Tajay Spears, Kirk Cousins for a first and a second. That's probably premium value there, right? If that first is the top half, or if you're a contender though, you need a quarterback and you're okay with Spears value probably going up when Henry leaves. I love that side. I think that's a very solid side for you as a contender. This next one, Justin Jefferson and Kirk for T and Burrow. So basically Flipping the coin, right? In this whole deal, I'd rather have Justin Jefferson. He's the best asset, right? I understand the Burrow and Higgins side, though. If Higgins gets franchised, which he probably will, then you have Burrow with him. You know, it's not a bad stack, and Kirk's kind of a depreciating asset, probably two years. But if you're going for it and you can get Justin Jefferson, I think that side is fine. Kirk Cousins for Geno Smith. I actually lean Kirk Cousins. I'm a Geno Smith hater. Everybody knows that. I don't even know if he's going to be there after this year. I think you're very limited with Geno as your quarterback on your roster and on your team. I would take Kirk Cousins for Geno Smith. You could probably get plus something because Geno gets valued a little higher than that and we're coming off the injury. But if I can get Kirk Cousins for Geno Smith plus, I would do that. Now, Baker's an interesting one. You know, he's done enough in Tampa Bay that he could be brought back. He probably is based on where their capital is at. You know, Mayfield for Swift in a third. Ah, it's super flex. I don't know if I love that for Mayfield. I like Swift. It's a hard one. Um, but that is generally speaking where his value's at. If I can get him for a second and a fourth, though, on a team where I need a QB three and, and that solid kind of floor, I would I would probably do that. Mayfield for and Gibson for Jamison and Tank Bigsby. Again, Tank has been a disappointment. Jamison has been a disappointment. Antonio's a you know Antonio at this point in fantasy. Baker to me is probably the safest asset. I cannot believe I just said that. Safest asset there. I still like Jamison's side, but this just gave you some values in terms of like, you know, when you're looking at the class as a whole, what what do we what do we like here, right? What do we like and what we're doing here? Now we're gonna be diving over to the running backs now. Okay, so now this is the class. This is like hey, where the value could be. We got Saquon, we got Josh, Jacobs, Tony Paula, DeAndre Swift, Austin Eckler, Derek Henry. Those guys right there are solid, right? And we're only doing 10 for each position. There's a lot, there's a more, but of the top 10, right? Those guys are going to be solid assets. Well, some of those guys are going to be on championship contending teams. 
the the point is finding them, right? After that, Zach Moss, Gibson, Singletary, and J.K. Dobbins. Now, I know the rhetoric is not to buy running backs, especially dynasty running backs right now, especially in January, right? I do think that there's some value to it, though. With the perceived notion of the 24 running back class isn't very good, which I still think there's there's pieces to be had in there. I think you can kind of jump on some of these guys early now, be the first or two teams in your league as like, Hey, a guy to go get it. I got Josh Jacobs for the two twelve in a league. So that was my deal that I made Josh Jacobs for two twelve. I'm a contender. I just won the championship. I'm going back for it. I need running back depth. I will take the shot with Josh Jacobs for the two twelve. This guy was like, just get him off my roster. He just took over the orphan. He's like, just get him off my roster. I got him off his roster, right? So that is kind of how you're looking at Josh Jacobs. He might've been on some orphan teams. Maybe someone just wants him, right? Now, when we're looking at the deals that happen, right? So we have Devon Chan for Saquon Barkley in a second. Again, I like the, I like the Barkley side. You know, I like, I like Devon and I think that in Miami, he'll be good. I, I think we talked about him when we talked about the rookie running backs, the injury stuff. If I can get the second back, I don't mind taking a re-roll on that second. Get Barkley. I think Barkley's going to find a very, very good spot, landing spot for him. I think Dallas is a really re realistic possibility. Chicago, those type of places. Um, Josh Jacobs was second for Travis Etienne. This was the interesting one. There are ETN stands all over the place. ETN has the most stands in fantasy football. If you feel like, hey, I have Josh Jacobs in a second and I can maybe tear up to ETN, if you can get that done and you believe in ETN and you think that this was kind of an outlier down the stretch of the season, you do that, right? Tony Paul for 107. I probably smashed the 107 side, right? All the 107s that you see are, are deals that I've seen personally, right? I'm not just going to throw out arbitrary numbers. He went for the 107. And if you look at tiers based on some of the rookie mocks that we've done, that's a sweet area right there. Maybe Roman Dunze is going to be there. Possibly Jaden Daniels. Those type of guys. Troy Franklin, Travion Henderson. Those guys in that range. I would definitely re-roll Tony Pollard for that. That deal just happened this week, right? So there, there's ways maybe you can go get that. I don't know how many leagues you can go get that, but like I say, what is the worst thing that can happen if you send that out? They reject it? Oh, well, I'll move on, right? I, I think that you know we get hesitant, like, oh, that would never get accepted. How the hell do you know? I've seen some bad trades done. Maybe you'll, you'll get that done, right? Uh, DeAndre Swift for a 25 second. Again, Swift is a pretty good value. I just, the landing spot for him is tough. I don't think the Eagles are going to bring him back. I do think they're going to be aggressive in the, in, in the draft. Uh, that's a tough one, right? Austin Eckler T Higgins for one Oh five. Again, you know, when you're looking at the one Oh five, that's a premium pick Brock Rome, possibly may possibly Daniels. Those guys are going to be in that area. For T. Higgins and Eckler, I think you will find Eckler on some contending teams next year. I think Eckler is a bounce back candidate with Higgins there. I like the Higgins Eckler side a little bit just because I think Eckler has something in the tank. But if you don't think Eckler has anything in the tank, 105 to me is the smash, right? Derrick Henry for two thirds. Man, sign me up for some Derrick Henry love, right? If I can get Derrick Henry for two thirds, I think that's a really, really good value uh, just because, you know what? I think that he has one more year. Right. Like, and that's just me being like, I, I got Derrick Henry for a late second in a league. I think he could have one more year. And I think that if he can find himself on a roster um, that can suit his running style, score some touchdowns, he could be like Lenny, playoff Lenny. Now, let's go to wide receivers T. Higgins, Mike Evans, Calvin Ridley, Michael Pittman Jr., Marquise Brown, Gabe Davis. Had to throw him on here. Don't yell at me. Uh, Darnell Moody, DPJ, Curtis Samuel, Tyler Boyd. Not amazing guys, right? Up at the top, though, we got T. Higgins, who I think is going to get franchise tagged, but we don't know that for sure. Mike Evans, hard to see him not being anywhere from Tampa Bay. The, I think the pieces that are interesting are like Ridley, who I think is going to be moved on because I think they can get that comp pick back for him. Michael Pittman, I think that they're going to re-sign Michael Pittman, but it probably comes down to contract, maybe a franchise. Marquise Brown is probably gone from all the reports that I've seen. They've talked about maybe bringing him back if he takes a discount. But the problem with Marquise Brown, if he takes a discount, stays. He's probably playing Marvin Harrison Jr., right? So that upside is kind of gone, right, when you're thinking about that. Now, let's look at some deals here for wide receivers. T. Higgins for Qu Quinton Johnson, Christian Kirk in a second. This is one of those pieces where you have a probably a quarter in T. Higgins and you throw dimes at the other manager, right? Quentin Johnson, eh, you know, I, I don't, I'm not throwing dirt on the kid, uh, but you know, he's a very depreciated asset right now. Kirk, 27, 
going to push 27. How do you feel about that a second? I think I take the baked in value with T Higgins because you could probably move T for more after this if it doesn't work out. Mike Evans for Josh Downs in a third. You know, Josh Downs is one of the best rookie wide receivers in Colts history. I mean, efficiency, the numbers, the stats, everything there. Christian Williams will love that. Um, for Mike Evans, this is the type of tear down you might have to make, right? I would love to turn that Josh Downs in a second for Mike Evans. If I can get a second or possibly a first, I love that more. I don't mind going out and buying Mike Evans though on contending rosters either because you get those baked in points for next year. And Mike Evans had a top three season of his career this year. And I've talked about that. Um, that is an interesting area there. Pittman and Ridley for Alave. I like the Alave side. Tear up. You grab Ridley who, you know, wide receiver 25 to 30 in there. Pittman, I definitely look good this year. We don't know necessarily what that's going to look like with Richardson. Alave, you know, most places valued as a top 10 guy. I like the tier up there and the consolidating of the assets. Michael Pittman for Tank Dell in a third. So just to show you kind of where maybe you could tear down to Tank Dell. Tank Dell is like wide receiver 14, I think, on the keep trade cut in some of these other areas. Um, I, I you know I, I tend to lie with Pittman here. I know I'm an outlier there. I know I just said the stuff about Richardson. Um, I like this deal for both sides. I think it's 50 50. It's just basically pick your poison. Who do you like the most? And does that third give you anything? But a 26 third is so far away that I, I don't think it moves the needle quite for me. If I can make that a 25, I'd be okay with that. Next one, smash the Addison side. If you can go get Addison for a first and Marquise Brown, and this happened in the league, do it now. Stop what you do. Actually, wait, watch the whole video. Then go see if you have Marquise Brown. Go off for a 25 first, Marquise Brown, and for Jordan Addison. See what happens. Um, and then Robio Dobbs for Gabe Davis in the third. I just put him in there for Gabe in terms of like where he's at. I like the Romeo side though. I would love to get him as an upside play for Gabe. If I have Gabe on a roster, Gabe is probably one of those guys that I'm trying to get off every single roster I possibly can. Um, and if he signs somewhere, that might be the value that you get. If he gets the second round or excuse me, if he gets like a wide receiver two role or something like that, similar to like Alan Lazard, when, you know, when we were thinking of his career track, that reminds me of like the Gabe Davis track there. All right, let's go to tight ends. Dalton Schultz, Noah Fant, Hunter Henry, Mike Kosicki, Gerald Everett, Colby Parkinson, Adam Troutman, Irv Smith Jr., Harrison Bryant, and then Austin Hooper. Those are our free agent tight ends. Dalton Schultz has played a pretty good role in the Texans. I, I'd be surprised if they let him go. Um, Noah Fant is still out there. I still think he's talented. It'll be interesting to see where he kind of ends up. Hunter Henry's probably one of those guys who's going to score touchdowns, and he's going to find that role in a terrible offense, right? So when we're thinking of like these tight ends, it's not a great tight end class. So let's not sit here and pretend like it is because it is not. But here are some deals that you can get for some of these tight ends. Dalton Schultz for Jahan Dotson. Thought that was interesting. If you were a big believer in Jahan Dotson, you got Schultz sitting out there. He's on that free agent contract. Go grab Dotson. You know, I'm not a huge dot. I don't have one share of Dotson, but I don't think that's <clears throat> appropriate value for him. I think Dotson's getting should be overvalued that. Um, but just thinking about where Schultz is at, you know, you might be able to get like that underperforming wide receiver three that you think is going to take that next step in that tier, in that Dotson tier. Noah Fan for Noah Brown. Hey, there's the two Noahs there. I, I would take Fan in a heartbeat. I think Fan is talented if he can find the role. I, I'm, I'm, I'm on board the, the, the Fan train. Noah Brown to me is just a piece, right? He's an older piece, a dynasty piece. It doesn't necessarily matter. Hunter Henry uh, for Amari DiMicardo. Again, this is more of like a, I, I think Hunter Henry is going to land himself in a role that he can score touchdowns in. Um, I don't believe Amari is going to be there or be that dom like that that guy for that offense. I think they're going to draft someone. That would be the way that you would think there. Um, I kind of like the running back in this mindset because I do think there's a role for him based on what he finished the season as. But that's just something to kind of note. Mike Siki for a third. And again, these are all thirds and fours. So Gerald Everett, Adam Troutman, I put those guys in there. You know, Everett is aging, aging, aging. Uh, Troutman was a hot topic for, you know, I don't know, two weeks and it kind of disappeared. But those are kind of where their values at. Just throw some, you know, thirds and fours at them. Um, and that's generally speaking what they're valued at. So I hope this helps when we're talking about kind of value for the free agent class. You know, T. Higgins is probably the big prize when we're talking about that. But the running backs, I think there, you know, there's opportunity now. And I know people aren't going to say, don't buy running backs till after the draft or whatever, but they're, they're valueless right now. Like no one wants these guys. Last year at this time, I was picking up Mixon in January and February in a lot of my leagues because people said he was going to get cut. And then he turned out really good performances for me where I could plug him and play him. That's like Jacobs. That's like Barkley. That's like Eckler. That's like Henry. If you have some extra draft capital, if you've been able to consolidate some and get some extra picks, 
go throw them at those guys because I do think that they're going to have value next season. And you never know. If you pick up Josh Jacob for a second, maybe in the middle of the year, he's having a really good year, but your team's kind of not is struggling. You might be able to flip him for a first, right? You don't have to keep these guys. You can always flip them as they're performing well. So hope this helps. Appreciate you guys. Check you on the next one. Thank you.